this isn't about wokeness, but there's certainly people who have said, Louis C.K., oh, I don't like care that he you know, did what he did. I'm going to go see him at um, whatever he's arena. Scott, you see he's him on a it. twin bill with Gallagher, right? Where you just want to put a poncho on. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace. Gallagher. Rest in peace, Louis C.K. Oh, I, I was mistaken. I did not understand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to break the news to you guys like this. <laughs> you know, Lou, I, I, I do think that Michael... Michael raises some good points that a lot of the people who get uh, who get trotted out as examples of you know where wokeness has killed comedy or, or stopped careers end up doing you know pretty well. Um, is that a is that a point against your argument? Well, I mean, there are people who survive assassination attempts. <laughs> you know. You know, so uh, a lot of people have done well in spite of the uh, uh, attacks on them. You, you brought up uh, Shane Gillis, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Shane Gillis, the guy is a great stand-up comedian, and he's a great sketch comedian. Fifteen years ago, he would have to be on TV. You know, and there, I believe there are so many uh, really ta talented people who fortunately are able to make a living you know, doing comedy in spite of the crap that they had to go through. But at the time, I mean, people were saying like, treating it like, oh, whatever, you know, uh, no SNL, he'll, he'll find gigs elsewhere. You're talking about uh, a comedy institution that launched the careers of so many legends. And to have that taken away from you is not something I think is just uh, easy to, uh, you know, to, to uh, brush under the rug. Um, and, and also, you know, with a lot of the people who were doing well, I mean, a lot of, you know, we could probably talk about how, um, comedy is doing with online stuff. You know, all the great comedians that are that are making stuff online. And nowadays, like, if you want to see great stuff, you got to go and, you, and watch online. But there was a time, again, when we were coming up, where the vanguard of comedy was happening on the screen, it was happening on TV, both in cable and network. And as a fan of comedy, right, I want it to be that I I want it to be that I need to catch those network TV uh, TV shows again. I want the greatest stuff to be there. I want so much comedy. But where but you know. where was the edgy anti woke comedy go, uh, on network television when you were growing up? I mean, you, maybe All in the Family. I mean, that, that's no, it. I'm not that old. <laughs> Dear you. No, me neither. Obviously not. I mean, I. <laughs> Oh, I just, it's something I'd read about. I, I would, uh, <laughs> on a CD-ROM. I would say, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I think In Living Color was great. I think Martin was great. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the ongoing characters, too, if I, I gotta remind you guys of, is that uh, on a lot of these shows, there was like always like the, the, the one like black race conscious dude, right? Who like saw a conspiracy everywhere, who was basically the proto-woke guy, and they always goofed on that dude. And they're like, no, nah, it's not racism, you don't have a job, you're lazy, dude. Like, these were normal jokes that we would hear. And now, that guy who believes that, he gets a PhD and a grant to, uh, you know, do research at Boston University. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Kendi, peace be upon him. Uh, 